Great, thanks. Thanks for having us. Um, so just to be clear, my name is Brian with a Y, and I'm a senior technologist in the Advanced Computer Engineering Lab at the Center for High Performance Computing in South Africa. I thought, oh, I have to confess, Julian, I made a few modifications to my slides while people were presenting. I thought I'd try the interactive button for the hands up. Has anyone not heard of the CHPC in South Africa? Because then I can skip. Okay, I'll talk about that. Then I would like to know who actually is attending from Africa in the chat. You can raise your hand with the button. Okay, I know Israel. All right, great. So this is I, this is me, and we are based in Cape Town, rated the best city in the world to visit, according to the Telegram in the UK. And just a bit of background, my family has been locked down at home for 60 days. I have three kids under the age of eight. I have two dogs, one bedroom slash office slash thoroughfare to the back garden. I have not visited the barber in 60 days and I'm fattening the curve. So I'm not showing a video and I hope not to be interrupted while I give my presentation. Uh, also, one of the first comments made at the beginning of our workshop was, that HPC users will be the big elephant in the room as far as the HPC certification goes. But I'd like to point out that sysadmins are also people and we have access to the similar rights. Um, and in fact, whereas users are the big elephant, I'd like to think of system administrators as Dumbo. And without us, we can't make our HPC systems fly. Okay, I'll return back to the original slides now. Uh, the CHPC is the National Supercomputing Facility based in Cape Town. We are a one petaflop system, and recently we fell out of the top 500, but as far as I know, we are still the largest HPC system in Africa, and we do all the usual uh, services. In addition to what we do for South Africa, we also focus on the Southern African community partner countries, these green countries over here, and also we are affiliated with the Square Kilometer Array partner countries in Africa, namely Ghana and West Africa, and Kenya and East Africa. So our reach and our responsibility expands far beyond our borders. Uh, our primary activities at the CHPC in terms of workforce development would be the traditional research support. We also run annual summer and winter schools. And my advanced computer engineering lab, the ACE lab, is responsible for the student cluster competition and the HPC ecosystems project. The research support, we are trying to develop an HPC workforce by facilitating advancements in research and optimizations for the HPC users. Our summer and winter schools, we, we have the summer school which focuses on the introduction to scientific computing tools for HPC. Uh, in many ways, it's very similar to a software carpentry workshop. It's run over a couple of days and we focus on things like introduction to Linux and also Python. Uh, the winter school to, focuses on parallel programming and effective cluster usage. Um, as far as the student cluster competition goes, the primary objective there was outreach for our undergraduate students, hopefully to steer their career decisions towards HPC. Um, but it's nice that we can also compete internationally in the competition. Uh, if you've ever heard of our performance at ISC, that's good. A uh, little humble brag that we tend to win the competition. So little old South Africa has placed themselves quite clearly on the map there. And while I'm on humble bragging, I can't skip an opportunity to mention that we are the current World Cup champions for rugby. Uh, the HPC Ecosystems Project is my baby. Uh, we work on that in the ACE lab. This takes top tier decommissioned supercomputers and we repurpose them as mid-tier systems and deploy them across Africa. And this is where I'm flying the HPC system administrator flag. Uh, because we are trying to develop an HPC system admin workforce across Africa. And our most recent system that we've repurposed is Stampede from TAC at the University of Texas, Austin. So we have very sophisticated systems, and here's a map of some of the sites that have been deployed. This focuses primarily on the Square Kilometer Array, but there are some partner countries as well within Southern Africa that are also receiving this, uh, equipment. Some of our challenges that we've experienced through our workforce development, specifically around the winter school. I won't talk much about the summer school because even there, we assume people don't have much background, so there's not really a necessity for a certification, but attendees from the summer school might earn a certification along the way, and then that certification could be 
provide as a pipeline towards attending the winter school because at our winter school we expect attendees to have some programming background experience with HPC they should at least know how to spell HPC and also some Linux background oh cool David's wearing a stampede t-shirt um, they make great t-shirts and they make even better hardware um, unfortunately with our winter school we've discovered uh, from training these participants that there seems to be a, a tremendous gap in the expectations on both sides. Uh, participants sometimes come with what they believe is Linux experience, but they've only used a graphical interface on an Ubuntu desktop. Uh, some expect us to teach them the Linux. Some don't have any basic programming experience whatsoever. And some expect the winter school, when we describe what we're going to teach, that that's going to teach them basic cluster usage. We as the trainers expect the applicants to have read the guide and the docs before they sign up. And we expect a certain level of core competencies from these participants because it's on the application form. And we've lost a lot of time in the past where we've spent considerable time assessing the scope of the expertise from the participants and having to adjust our content delivery to suit the audience because we pay for everyone to attend for a week. It's a very intense program. And we obviously don't want anyone to be left out, but it's frustrating our efforts because sometimes we spend time on components that we didn't expect to have to teach. So, you know, winter school's there to uh, raise the bar with OpenMP and MPI classes, but if participants have no background in programming or let alone have never used an HPC system, it makes our, our winter school uh, objectives uh, a bit uh, defunct. So in, uh, in that case, the HPC certification that lists the prerequisites that people need would help to clarify what is expected from participants and if they present that they have the certificate then we know that they're ready for the winter school as we've envisioned the winter school to be. Likewise for the project that I lead, the ecosystems project, this, the, the equipment that we procure is essentially free. We will provide this system free of charge to a host site and like David's wearing the Stampede t-shirt, the systems that we offer are pretty much as uh, available as a t-shirt. You can put your hand up. If you give a good motivation for the system, you claim that you have a use, you'll get some HPC equipment. And unfortunately, we've learned that if equipment is free, someone will take it even if they can't use it. The zero cost seems to cloud people's judgment. And the, the people believe that this is a fear of missing out, the one-shot opportunity. Uh, we have a history of gaining new systems in the pipeline, but nonetheless, people feel if they don't put their hand up now, they won't get equipment. And it's this misunderstanding that they have, they don't have the prerequisites necessary to run a system like this. They don't have a uh, system administrator experience at all. They lack HPC knowledge or even any Linux experience. They still expect to receive a system and put it to use. And even an entry-level certification for the management and leadership of these institutions would help to allay this misunderstanding, uh, which is a tremendous confounding factor for us to actually have useful allocation of these scarce resources. Uh, I've mentioned that some of the, the, sites, the sites assigned HPC system administrators that have no background in computing at all. Uh, with respect to geologists, I've been given a geologist to administer a system, and he's great, he's learning, but it takes months. Their system has been sitting idle for, the, in their particular case, a year. Uh, you know, we, we've gone through three iterations of hardware. So that equipment could have been allocated to a site that met the prerequisites, and we could have given them new equipment when it became available and they were ready. Um, so again, a certification of some form would help us to know who is ready for equipment, and we can guide people towards getting the certification so that they can be ready for when they are allocated equipment as well. Um, I see that my time is about to run out for 10. I don't hear any objections. That might be because everyone's muted, but I'll carry on. Um, the student cluster competition, there we, we train 20 teams of students to participate in the cluster competition. And we start from the very beginning, the grassroots with introduction to Linux. We go through everything up to deploying a, a virtual system in a one week schedule. And unfortunately for some teams, based on our historical disadvantages in South Africa, some teams lack any on-site expertise that can mentor them once that week is finished. So some teams rely on that one week, hands-on, to be the bulk of their support for the entire competition, which runs a year. It runs from winter, the year preceding ISC, and then 
the final round will be the, the, the strongest team that performs in Germany. So with us having to focus on the entry level expertise within a week for a lot of these students, they are disadvantaged. It also limits as the ACE lab because we lack the capacity to expand our outreach beyond a limit of about 20. We found as, you know, capacity wise a limit, but also just our personal resources. Our ACE lab is three big at the moment. It used to be four, but tech continues to take our staff and then we take their equipment. Um, I think it's a fair trade in some ways, but uh, we can't go beyond 20 because we have to focus on introduction to Linux, and introduction to HPC for that one week. If we had a curriculum that could be developed into a certification that we could outsource to content providers, and once we know that these students, however long it takes them to get that certification, receive that certification, we know we can allocate them to a one week focus session where we actually focus on HPC benchmarking and reach a larger audience that way because we, we, we're targeting the people that are ready and are not restricting and limiting the opportunity for learning HPC by providing the disadvantaged institutes with just one week to try and learn. It can be for many of them a massive mountain to scale. Um, so just in summary, we would love to see an, uh, an, a formal HPC certification, ideally one that's globally recognized because we can then focus our winter school on what we want, which is important HPC skills and improving scientific computing, rather than teaching them the basics to programming. Student class competition, I've touched on that. It would reduce the workload for the ACE lab, but it would also help us to reduce the bottleneck on the time that we spend on introductory topics during that one week intensive course. We can improve the quality of that one week that's hands-on with the students. Uh, HPC ecosystems, my, my personal struggle is not being able to deploy a system and focus on getting users to the science. Um, gosh, lots of messages. I'll, I guess I'll respond to them at the end. Um, yeah, at the moment we deploy a system and we could take months to train the system administrators to even install an operating system and get around the concept of a, a HPC system. I've deployed a system before where the system administrators wanted to install Windows. So those are sort of challenge experiencing. Um, and sometimes not their fault. They're allocated a responsibility from management. Management doesn't understand what this equipment is. So even if we had an introductory certification for managers of, of data centers to understand what an HPC system is, it might also help us to sort of filter out the people's misunderstandings. Um, our final thoughts, I spoke to my colleagues. The, we, we believe that we need to know our audience, what skills, we, what, what we're building from, so if people come in with certifications, we know that's the audience that we're going to get and we know what we can develop from there, knowing our goals to prepare for that training. We, we can tell what we're going to build towards. And as someone's mentioned earlier, having a certification is also a motivator for a lot of people. We're turning a lot of our content online now because of the COVID-19 situation, but also we were always aiming to do that to scale out our training and providing a certification would encourage a lot of people to stay on because historically uh, there's a lot of challenges to retention on online courses, a high dropout rate. So providing an, an added incentive such as a certification that can be recognized uh, and respected would be a good way to keep people uh, to maintain their online training. So in summary, I'm coming up to it. CHPC does have a dream, but uh, that CHPC I need to clarify. I have a dream on behalf of the CHPC since I'm the one giving the presentation. We have uh, an example of what we'd like to see as HPC certifications here. We've got an introduction to HPC, which might be a very high level thing that could be appropriate for institutional leadership, data center managers, and so on, you know, cover the basics, and then go all the way down there to HPC system admin, where uh, we could have a general, a generic software stack for HPC, or we could even have participants have to go to a virtual cluster deployment on a certain software stack. And they get an HPC system administration for open HPC, and so on. So, yeah, the slides are available. You can look at that later. I think I've run beyond my time, but due to popular demand, I've prepared my business card for you to cut out and you can paste it on your refrigerator or on your Uber Eats box if you don't have a refrigerator. Um, and there's my email address. And I'm happy to now look at the comments. I haven't read through all of them, uh, but I'm done. And as far as the presentation goes, thank you for your time and I hope that you all stay safe. That's great. I, I just say basically two questions. Uh, I just read them that we have them recorded, like okay. we did for the other. Um, 
how heterogeneous is your use base in the software application background? That's the first question from Christian. Uh, how heterogeneous is our user base? Can 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 we elaborate what that what that means? That's a big word for me being stuck indoors for sixty days. Uh, I'm right. Um, so Hi. yeah, it was me asking. Um, so heterogeneous in terms of our scientific background is it uh, mainly let's say physicists or a computer uh. scientist or uh, is it from all sorts of scientists up to the humanities? Right, right. So I would say it, it's very broad. Um, I particularly am not involved on the user side with the main system because I'm part of the computer engineering lab, so we do R&D. But I do know we have uh, discipline specialists from uh, CFD, bioinformatics, computer science, mathematics, uh, material, chemistry, and things like that. So it's, it's a, we, we cover all the bases. All right. So Go on, Christian. Yeah, my, my, my second part was uh, how do you guys see user progress when, when people start with ba the basic Linux intro uh, up to the way to proficiency? Uh, would you consider it reasonably fast or uh, and which fraction actually makes it to some kind of proficiency beyond basic Linux intro proficiency? Right, so um, I'll, I'll separate that into the two categories, one being the system administrators because I'm heavily involved with that. With the student class competition, when we do basic Linux intro, by the end of that one week, students will have learned enough to eventually win ISC student class competition internationally. So I think some people benefit really well, but as far as the users go, I don't deal directly with many of the users, but uh, our users don't have, many of them don't do any of their own coding. They take prepackaged uh, solutions and run their code, uh, run their uh, computation from that. But my colleagues who do the help desk would probably say that a vast majority of the basic Linux intro doesn't get beyond that, from my understanding. But I can't speak on on that with much depth, unfortunately. Okay. Anyway, thank you for your. Sure. So the second question was from Julie, who asked if you are working with the SIG HPC Education Chapter System Professional Committee. Um, Brian. This Really. Um, so I guess to clarify this, it's not necessarily because I, I understand that you are super busy, but <laughs> sometimes having user um, user profiles is really valuable. And what you've presented here is a really valuable profile for a, a, a class of not so much users, but um, but but people, team members that that I think could sort of focus some of what they're saying. You, I'm sure you overlap, and if if you all could pull something together so you had different pieces of it, then you wouldn't have to be reinventing it all the time. That was all. That was my thinking. Yeah. I, I totally agree. Um, Veronica and Nilofa from EPCC have have raised the Stig HP Education Professional Committee, um, and I'm aware of it from SC. So, you know it's just getting us on the same page uh, time-wise has been a challenge, but I, yeah, I agree. We don't want to reinvent the wheel at all. 